Cam Newton is back in Carolina and we're all better for it. Cooper Cup needs to be involved, at least, in the MVP conversation. No Tom Brady in Foxborough, no problem. That's right, another profitable week for us right here on Take the Points, presented by Bedfred Sports. I'm your host, Jordan Schultz. Let's run the table on week 10. Week 10 brought us the return of three superstar quarterbacks, Cam Newton, Aaron Rodgers, and of course, Russell Wilson. I wanna focus specifically on number three, Russell Wilson, because it's make or break time in Seattle, my hometown, and if the Seahawks don't start winning, I'm telling you, Russell Wilson is gone. And three NFC powerhouses are reeling. Both the Rams and Bucks have lost two straight, and the Cards have dropped two out of three. Let's look at the Bucks, though, the reigning Super Bowl champs, because last year, after their bye, Tampa went undefeated and route to winning a Super Bowl. This season, they've now dropped two straight to New Orleans, and then at Washington, specifically to Taylor Heineke, my guy destroyed that defense. But I'm a little bit concerned because without Gronk and without Antonio Brown, Tom Brady has now thrown four picks in his last two games. We mentioned the losses. The defense has not gotten after the quarterback. I'm a little bit concerned, yes, about Tampa. No Tom Brady in Foxborough, no problem. That's right. The New England Patriots have won four straight games. Matt Jones is playing like a rookie of the year candidate. He comes off his best game yet, 19 of 23, three touchdowns and a blowout win over Cleveland. And suddenly things are looking up for Bill Belichick, Matt Jones and the New England Patriots. Not something I expected to say the least. This time last week, I was eating a bowl of cereal. Those are the words of Cam Newton after Carolina went into Arizona and beat the Cardinals on their own turf. And what a story it is. Cam Newton back in Carolina, where it all began for the former league MVP. And this is how it all went down. Sources tell me that Matt Rule, the head coach of the Panthers, and GM Scott Fitter reached out to Bill Belichick and the entire Pats front office to make sure that the Cam Newton they were getting was exactly the Cam they wanted. A guy that was focused on football, ready to contribute, and ready to play right now. And that's exactly what they got. Belichick said he loved him, Rule was convinced, they made the call, they paid the man, and Cam Newton in his first two touches had two touchdowns for the Panthers. Cam Newton is back in Carolina, and we're all better for it. Don't at me, but it's time for my top five MVP list. Number one, Lamar Jackson. Number two, Dak. Number three, Josh Allen. Number four, Kyler Murray. And number five, good old Cooper Cup. All Cup has managed to do is have 1,141 yards receiving, 85 catches, and 10 touchdowns. All three lead the league, and with Robert Woods now lost for the season and Odell Beckham in the fold, it's time for Cooper Cup to get even more yardage, more touchdowns, and I believe he will. So yes, Cooper Cup is a legitimate MVP candidate, perhaps the best receiver in the league, and yes, he's on his way to his first ever Pro Bowl. Eastern Washington's finest, Cooper Cup, don't at me. With decades of experience, Bedfred Sports brings you one of the best sports betting experiences in Colorado, Iowa, and Pennsylvania with a variety of betting options, including in-game wagering, teasers, tons of prop bets, and more. All right, guys, a special edition of the drop-in. I caught up with my guy, Jack Settleman, in the streets of New York City. Jack is one of the most prominent and interesting sports influencers today. All right, Jack, how does a guy from Baltimore, Maryland, University of Texas, all of a sudden become a NFT superstar. <laughs> How do you get into this space and what ultimately led you to really pursue it? So I built Snapback Sports, which is the largest sports Snapchat channel. And so I live on digital, I live on social media. You're a true digital native. I am a true yeah. digital native. None of this SEO bull yeah. crap that people are doing. SEO, <laughs> forget SEO, it no doesn't SEO. matter. <laughs> All social. So I'm on social. I love collecting cards. I got back into that during COVID. And my audience is this ravenous fan base of the NBA and they love the players. And I had also been buying crypto for a few years. Come, all comes to NBA Top Shot. Top Shot comes along. It's the combination of all those factors. And that's really what got me into Top Shot. Did you have a certain player or play that you were like, I have to have that, and then that led you down the road. So Chris Paul is my favorite player. I'm a Knicks fan, but buying Wait, cards. You're, hold on. From Baltimore, love CP3, like the Knicks. <laughs> Loved CP3 and Lob City and his time in, okay. in New Orleans with Tyson Chandler. 
moved to New York and just became captivated with Knicks fans. I wasn't really a Wizards fan. It was kind of far yeah. from Baltimore. So that's how we end up with that. People always say Texas, Ravens, yeah. Knicks. It makes no sense. I agree. But being collecting cards forever, I realized when I went to Top Shot, I'm not gonna look for the best plays, not gonna look for the best rookies, LeBron James. LeBron James is what people care about. So I spent a lot of money on LeBron, Giannis. Steph Curry, Giannis, the guys who are established players in the league who are superstars. You can make your bets on some of the rookies. Like a Luka. Luka, Ja, yeah. those types yeah. of guys. But at the end of the day, what do people wanna buy? LeBron James. So what was the first moment for you where you realized, not only is this a hobby and fun, but I can make real cash. Well, when you're buying moments for like $8 and then a week later they're worth $100 and then $1,000, at that time you realize, okay, maybe there's some money into this as well. So are you trading day to day or are you holding? I am mostly holding my blue chips and anything I would be trading are some of those rookies. So perfect example, you buy Evan Mobley a week ago, Evan Mobley a week later could have doubled in price because he looks like the rookie of the year yeah. and really looks like a superstar. Yeah, he's the man. Yeah. I love I love me some Evan Mobley. <laughs> Go out and buy some of him. Uh, what was uh, like, did you have a, a time in your life where you thought, you know, I want to pursue this full time. And people said you were crazy because like, who's going to do that? Of course, these are digital pictures they're and not YouTube even, highlights. Not we're even, for YouTube. Yeah, you're not, yeah, I was going to say, for those who don't know, it's not an actual physical card. That's what I like. It's literally a highlight that you could watch on YouTube. Yeah. And so for months, when I first told my parents I was getting into cards, they were like, you're buying pieces of paper, pieces of cardboard. paper with grown metal in it. It yeah. makes no sense. Then you see it on the internet, you see it on TV. So like, okay, maybe he's got something figured yeah. out there. Same thing with the NFTs. It's like, can you just watch that on YouTube? But as simple as I can break it down is like, yes, you can screen record that, you can screenshot it, but only I can sell it. Look at a LaMelo ball. He's the guy. Yeah. If, I'm, if I'm looking at one player that's really, really young and not yet a superstar, it has to be LaMelo ball. But his stuff is worth way more than Anthony Davis. Yes. So how much of that is because he's a guard, the Q rating, his, his kind of cool factor, like how much is all that play? All of that stuff is yeah. playing in. It's why Lamelo is one of the most followed persons on Instagram because he's fun, he's flashy, and people buy into that. And they, the way I look at it, and not a lot of people think do, this, this would be my tip. Go on Instagram and just see how many people follow a certain person. Wow. And that That's the barometer. Well, that gives you their audience. One guy who's been in the news a lot, Odell Beckham, uh, he hasn't had a 100 yard game in basically two years. He's been injured a lot. He's he's a great name. Yeah. He had a couple great seasons, but I look at him compared to Cooper Cup, who leads the league in all three categories, receptions, 85. He has over 1,100 yards. He's got 10 touchdowns. But Cooper Cup's card is not worth as much as OBJ's card. Why is that? And is OBJ a guy that you'd want stock in? You said he hasn't had 100 yards in two, in two oh, years, yeah. right? So I don't know if I'd invest in him, but I also wouldn't invest in Cooper Cup for that reason. So is Beckham... Is he a guy that uh, that has value, even if he's not producing? He does, just because it's OBJ. And once again, go to Instagram, 8.7 million and followers. Also, right? a lot of engagement. A ton you know, of engagement. Hate and love, which yeah. is probably good. It's always yeah. good to have both of those because when people are trying to make money, they don't really care if they like the person or they hate the person. They care about the end goal. And so if they think you, they can make money on an Odell card, they'll, they'll go and make money. Okay, so we've talked about a lot of players. Some of your, we mentioned Trey Young wife. I don't know if you own any Trey Young, but. <laughs> I do not. What, what's the best single investment you've made to date? In the sports car world, I would say probably Ronaldo and Messi. I bought a bunch of their base prism stuff from the 2014 World Cup before anyone was into soccer. And then people were like, oh, this is Those Messi, Ronaldo. Cool. Yeah. Like the two greatest soccer yeah. players ever. In the NFT world, it's probably been on top shot. We made a splash when we bought, I bought with a couple of buddies, a LeBron top shot moment. It's out of 59, so super rare, and it's numbered 23. And so oh, there's no PSA 10s, yeah. there's no grading system. So in NFTs, you just use serial numbers. And that's how, right, number 23, yeah. number one, those are your PSA 10s, BGS 10s. Mm. Your whatever, six, which is kind of an alternate jersey of his, lower numbers, those are your nines and et cetera. So we bought that for like, 50 grand. We all pulled let me in guess, all our Let me money. guess, it's worth 500. 
We got a bid for a half a million dollars, but we're holding it because Hold it. because it's LeBron. It's LeBron. It's number twenty three. It's probably his best top shot moment. So of course, financially, maybe it makes sense to sell this and a ten x. We got that offer sixty days after. Most people they get a ten x, they sell. Yeah, but. You have to look at the long-term potential. What's the top LeBron card going to? His logo, man. They can't price you it. Can't. Ten million. Yeah, I was gonna say eight. Half, right. Yeah, ten. And so you think if NFTs truly catch on, and we're holding Damn. the Grail, in the next three years, maybe it only goes up to yeah. seven hundred fifty grand. But ten years, could it be five, ten, twenty? Could million? it be? Who knows? Could it be fifty grand? Exactly. In ten it, years, it could be zero dollars, and that is part of the equation. Yeah. But we made this bet on the long term of LeBron James and NFTs, and we'll ride it out. Thanksgiving coming up. We got the Settlement family. I don't know if you're, are you in Baltimore for this? I'll be down in Florida. You got, you got the 85 year old grandpa, the 72 year old uncle. You got the weird step cousin over there. You got the half, whatever. How do you explain what we just talked about to all of these people who probably either think you're nuts and or uh, delusional? Which is both, I guess, Ooh. the same thing. You know how you don't want to talk about when are you getting married? When are you getting right. married? When are you having the grandson? It's, right. yeah. it's a very similar conversation. Yeah. But if they break you down after the second plate of turkey, here's how I would kind of handle it. Uh, I always start with the example of, yes, you can capture it digitally yourself, but can you sell it? And so I think that's one of the things, okay. right? And, and another thing that might make a lot more sense to an older generation is there's fake Gucci bags, right? Fake Jordans. Those have easily made a massive market. Right. right. Why do you prefer to own the real thing right. over the fake? It's just, some part of it, right? Yeah. It's almost tough to explain. Yeah. Some part of it's just like human values. Yeah. It's like, I don't want to be known as a fake. Right. I don't want to flex something that is fake. So I start th those two ways. Then if they're a little more technologically advanced, you think about verification, right? On Instagram, right. Twitter, all these platforms. Can you touch a blue check mark? No. no. But you no. know the intrinsic yeah. value to it. We know what it does more in the business sense, but from an outside perspective, you can see, okay, this person is more legitimate. That's kind of what's going on with the NFTs. So when I want to speak out saying this is a good NFT to buy, here's why I'm investing in NFTs, and I have a crypto punk as my profile picture, people are like, okay, that gives him a little more validity in this situation. And then they say, what's crypto? Yeah. And then you just say, let me ask more why. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, Jack Seven, I want to thank you a lot. This is the drop-in on Take the Points. <laughs> Time now for big woof, dogs of the week where we are six and two on the season. We're gonna keep it rolling in week 11. I like Dallas at KC, catching two and a half. I actually think the Cowboys win this game straight up in Arrowhead, and it really comes down to Dak Prescott, who was once again a magician in a 43-3 win over the Falcons. He had three total touchdowns, over 300 total yards. CeeDee Lamb was excellent, and I think Dallas' defense got back to that smash mouth football. I like the Cowboys straight up against the Chiefs. Time to welcome in Jason Silva from Bedfred Sports for week 11, early lines we love. Jason, the floor is yours. Great, uh, Jordan, first game I like going, uh, going into this week as far as getting on early, right? We're talking early lines we love here. Patriots minus six and a half Thursday night football. It's going to be a quick turnaround here in a couple nights at, at Atlanta. Uh, it's historically a pro, uh, organization who's dominated Atlanta. I don't think they've lost to them since the 90s. I don't usually like to look at those stats, but looking across here, uh, Atlanta with the offensive line they have, worst ranked by PFF across the NFL, and the Patriots starting to eat defensively, starting to get into tune offensively with Mac Jones. Lay the six and a half here because I don't see this one not getting past that key number of seven come kickoff. You mentioned Mac Jones, winners of four straight. He comes off his best game. 23, 19 to 23 against Cleveland. They blow them out. Uh, is this a little pro patch, Jason Silva, that we need to worry about? Uh, you could say that, but uh, no, you know, we're just looking at the best number you can get, right? So uh, as far as this one goes, it's you're not gonna see it any better than six and a half. Uh, Atlanta coming off that terrible loss to the Cowboys. I don't see how anybody's gonna be jumping on keeping that number under seven. So that's why we like it there. All right, fair enough. We're going to Jacksonville and San Francisco for your next play. Yeah, maybe a little bit of recency bias here looking at San Francisco. How they played yesterday against the Rams on Monday Night Football. But uh, another one I don't see not passing that passing through that key number of seven come kickoff. The San Fran actually on the road as well. Three and one eight, uh, on the road this season. Uh, two and two ATS on the road. But nonetheless, a, a team who's been traveling and playing better on the road than they have at home. Um, so I, I like them laying the six and a half at Jacksonville. Another one I don't see not going up through that key 
key number. So again, uh, you, you bet this one now with San Fran minus six and a half. Yeah, after that Rams game, I feel like everyone's gonna be on San Francisco. Nobody trusts Urban Meyer. So I think that line's, is it, is it possible that could go to seven and a half or eight? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's going to go up and through that seven. Uh, I, I feel similarly about the Patriots line right now as well. So again, uh, San Fran's not somebody I'd be jumping to bet personally, but if you're going to be on that side and you like that side, that's it's about getting the best number, right? So up, up uh, before they pass us through that key number, and I could see it up into seven and a half, eight for sure. All right, let's move on to best bets week 11. Jason, uh, I know you got some interesting plays. Yeah, so this one's going to be a real stinker, right? I don't think people are going to be uh, running to the TV set to throw this game game on Dolphins laying three and a half I'm sorry laying three at the Jets this weekend um, both these offensive lines are very poor uh, but what I like here is the way the Dolphins are turning the corner right two wins in a row uh, coming off a primetime win against the Baltimore last week which nobody was on right um, this is a Dolphins team sentiment's been very low on but winning two in a row I think this is a divisional game where they must win and uh, and two are back with another week after how we saw them play late uh, in the second half last week to get the win Give me the Dolphins laying the three at the Jets this weekend. Ryan Flores finally got that defense playing. Uh, I actually like that as well, though I will not be watching. Uh, and I don't think you should either, frankly. Um, what else you like? I also like the Bengals coming off a bye at Vegas. You know what? Uh, they had that emotional high after the Gruden fire. I thought, you know, maybe this team can keep the wheels spinning. But, man, uh, have they looked really poor losing the Giants two weeks ago? No offense. Uh, Danny Dimes tearing them up. And then on the other end, this week against uh, Kansas City, they looked pitiful. I, I just think the wheels have fallen off. Bengals coming off a bye week. I think that's very important for this young team. I think it's a great bounce back for them after that embarrassing loss to the Browns two weeks ago. You know what? I was on the Raiders. And you just convinced me. I'm going Bengals. I just flipped. Okay? I flipped. I might <laughs> even go. take an alternative line. Three and a half. All right, Jason. Give me your best bet, also known as your bet the farm game. Yeah, we're going back to the bet the farm. One I mentioned already earlier as an early line. Patriots minus six and a half. And you know what? Maybe I am a homer, but man, the way they looked the other day, Christian Barrymore up the middle. Um, he got Matt Judon coming off the edge. And this Atlanta team who, like I said, ranks last in the NFL when it comes to PFF grades. Uh, I think across the whole line, everybody has allowed double-digit hurries on the season. So there's no bright spot there. And I think the Patriots can eat them alive, play efficient football. They finally get that run going. And again, I like the number where it's at now. So I'm betting the farm on the Patriots, laying the six and a half at Atlanta this weekend. Jason Silva, Bet Fred Sports. Always a pleasure. Okay, so my best bets of week 11. I like the Cincinnati Bengals minus one at Allegiant Stadium in Vegas. The Raiders are reeling right now. I can't trust them. And Cincinnati, meanwhile, was reeling, but they come off a bye. I think Joe Burrow and that offense settles down. Look for another monster game from Jamar Chase. The Raiders are having trouble stopping the run. Joe Mixon is a Pro Bowl candidate. And I think the Bengals go in and win this game by, let's say, a nice seven points. I like the Philadelphia Eagles minus one and a half at home against the Trevor Simeon-led Saints. And really, this comes down to the run game for me. The last three games for the Eagles, Head coach Nick Sirianni has really committed to the run. Philly has 175 yards or more in all three. We've seen Boston Scott, we've seen Jordan Howard, and Jalen Hurts has been excellent in the air, but also with his legs. I think Philadelphia rolls the Saints at home. And my bet the farm game is Minnesota getting two and a half at home against Green Bay. The books are begging you to take the Packers after their impressive 17-0 win over Seattle, the first time Russell Wilson ever been shut out. Don't fall for the trap. Take those purple people ears. They come off an impressive win themselves against the Chargers. And we've seen it now for a few weeks. Adam Thielen, Dalvin Cook, Kirk Cousins on the same page. That defense has been really good. Eric Hendricks had that great pick against Herbert. And we've seen them consistently create pressure. I like Minnesota straight up at home against the Pack. My Bet the Farm game of the week. Take the points brought to you by Betfred Sports. Sign up now and never miss a bet with BetfredSports.com. Proud partner of the Denver Broncos and Colorado Rockies. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the show. Comment your top five MVPs below, like, and subscribe.